Max, how you doing? It's Henry. And motion blowers. It's a nice warm day today here on Long Island. 62 degrees. And it's uh, March like 2nd. It's, it's amazing. I don't know. I don't think I don't think we're going to get any more snow anymore. But of course, I said that before a million times. Anyway, today we're going to try to get this uh, cleaned up a little bit. It's got a lot of dirt and stuff. I've never washed it before. Uh, my water is still turned off for the winter, you know, we have to do that here on the East Coast because pipes freeze, whatever, you're going to blow all your sprinkler tubes, pipes. So uh, I'm not convinced yet that we're not going to get a deep freeze, so I can't turn on my water. So uh, I'm just going to spray the, I'm going to try to paint the wheels today. I know, and because I want to paint it FDE or flat dark earth or beige, you know, military desert sand color, um, I need to mask the tires because the tires are black. If I spray it like that, you can get overspray. I'm gonna try that business card trick where you put it between the um, tire and the rim, and that way at least you can put a blanket over here or a rag, and then the business cards will mask the uh, tire. And then clean this with super clean, all the four wheels, and then um, paint it, and then <laughs> Try to put some fix a flat in some of these tires so that uh, the whole i might use my fire extinguisher to do this we'll see so super clean works great you don't even have to agitate you just spray it on it does its thing it gets all the dirt off you just rinse it off There we go. This is a little bit darker than I wanted, but that's the only can that I had. The rest of it will be a little bit lighter color, the dark sand. Either way, as long as it's that color. Came out pretty well. The business card trick works great. I'm gonna leave it out here overnight, let it cure. It's warm enough, and uh, tomorrow I'll see what I do. Good morning. So it's the next day. 63 degrees. It's uh, March 2nd or 3rd. Um, got three snowblowers in my garage taking up a lot of space. I don't know. Do I risk bringing it to the back and storing it because there's not going to be any more snow? <laughs> Watch. It snows tomorrow. I'm going to move all that stuff out of here and into the back shed. Unlike electric snow blowers, the gas ones, if you're going to store them, you've got to run the gas out. Stopping it from getting gas. Clean out the carburetor. There you go. Even if you have a lot of gas in there, now it'll be uh, good to store for the summer so that when you open it up next year to use it, it's not going to be any uh, ethanol buildup in the carburetor because there's no gas in it. But with electric ones, you don't have to worry about that. Just throw it in the shed. Because I use business cards to put in between to mask off the tire from the paint, I deflated all the air out of it. There's three that are good, but the other three are no good. So I'm gonna put some fix a flat in it while I inflate these things. So from time lapse, I uh, took all the business cards out, 
looks pretty good. Uh, put fix a flat in the tires that I knew that leaked. Put air back in it again, and then I started doing a little bit of leftover paint that I had for the wheels to match the front over here. So I've got the uh, push bar, a little bit of a front frame uh, and the front end all done. And then while I was here, since we don't use this anymore for the uh, height adjustment of the deck, we're not, we don't have a deck. These things are very useful. You know, the push button for the release, these are very useful because a lot of times when you get tractors like this, the push button doesn't really work. So to have this mechanism here is very useful. Also on my uh, orange and red LT1000 that I have in the shed that I broke the transmission on. Something that, uh, which I have to fix. It didn't have the knob for the blade engagement. So now I have the knob for that. So take parts off of stuff that you know you're not gonna need, put it on stuff that you need before. Uh, cleaned up the tractor, you know, a little bit. It's not gonna be perfect, whatever, but. As long as it's that color, you know, I don't care. Um, because I painted this, I don't want to push it up on its side because I do want to change the double stack pulley from that one to a John Deere one, which has a bigger diameter, lower pulley, which uh, would prevent the slipping of this. Uh, so far, the tire seems to be holding air and I don't hear any leaks, you know, just uh, from sitting here. Okay, I just fixed a loose connection on the wiring harness for the lights. And now I'm going to Push this onto its side so I can see the bottom. Oh, oh man. Holy cow. Whew. Okay, now I want to address the slipping in the uh, the, the pulley, the bottom pulley of the double stack. Look, see? It's supposed to be tight as if there was a tension pulley arm engaged when it's engaged. But this is always engaged because of the hydrostatic, you can control forward and reverse with just the shift knob. So because of this little bit of um, slack here, sometimes it slips. Also, the engine is still dripping a little bit of oil, not a lot. So that's the stock uh, Craftsman one. I got another one here to measure, and it is exactly the same one, so that's not going to help. So this is the John Deere one. The John Deere one is, is significantly larger all around, so I'm afraid that it's going to be too big. That's what she said! <laughs> <laughs> And I'm just going to swap it with this one. Hopefully it'll take up this slack, you know. I'm going to try it. I mean, there is quite a bit of slack. See, look, I can, I can pinch this together. So I'm going to take this one out and try to shove that one in there. It's going to be tough. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it on because I mean I really had to try hard just to get that off. Yeah, I'm gonna to have to stretch this a lot. A whole lot. Yeah, it's not gonna fit. It's gonna to cause too much stretching. Unless I try to find another belt. It's longer than this. Then I'll be in the same boat again. So I've been sitting here thinking about it and uh, I got this other one from a, like a push behind commercial mower. It's just a pulley and I think I cut it, I don't remember. But anyway, this is bigger than the original, right? And smaller than the John Deere. So this is like in between. And if I could close the distance between you know, because it, it stretches bigger when you're lower, right? So if I made this pulley more, in, instead of like down to here, right? Maybe if I put it close to there, 
it'll warm match up that thing the belt so i was thinking about just welding this one onto here but then that actually increases the distance that that has to stretch which is more so i'm thinking about because i need this part here because there's a keyway in there right and a key this one doesn't have one nor does it even have a hole for a set screw in there and not to mention this diameter of the hole is bigger than that it's more this is like an inch and a quarter that's like an inch standard thing for for that and uh well what if i i'm thinking it i'm the wheels be a turning man they are they're turning I need the keyway. So the keyway is right here. What if I cut it so I have the keyway and then weld this part onto here, making a shorter one so that doesn't have to travel that far and the bigger diameter of the pulley will fill that space. You know, I've never done that before. <laughs> I kind of want to try it. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to cut this to keep the keyway and attach this to that by welding it. That's gonna be interesting. I've never done that before. All right, look at that. I made my first mini double stack pulley. Uh, it's not really exactly centered. It's off by like a millimeter. So it's gonna, it probably is gonna go a little oblong. That's all right. I cut it and I welded it outside and inside. And there's a little lip there that I could rest the welds on there. So this, this should be good. I mean, at least I'm gonna try it. You know what I mean? So we've closed the distance, you know, it was down to here before, right? So the belt doesn't have that much to stretch. And at the same time, we're, we're filling that uh, slack with a larger diameter pulley. And in turn, this should be faster too. This is really hot right now. So this is probably not gonna work only because I just don't think that, you know, eyeballing everything and thinking what may or may not work is going to work without actually measuring things, which I didn't do. I'm just trying it. It was definitely interesting. Yeah, that's, that's a tough stretch. Very tough. Tough to stretch this, for sure. Because this thing's kind of in the way, the bar. That, that ought to help. It's still in the way because the pulley is so big. Okie dokie. You know what I did? I stuck a crowbar in here, used my leg, and pushed it that way. And that way it it got uh, perpendicular, you know, to the shaft. And while I, my leg was pulling it there, I went bang, 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 and pulled it in. Look, boing, boing, boing. This, this belt is super stretched for sure. But the crankshaft bolt that goes in there only stops there because remember, we're missing the bottom one, right? I've shortened the uh, shaft. So this bolt is too long for the crankshaft. So I have to put some spacers and washers in there and some trial and error. And it looks like we're going to be, this is so tight. It probably wouldn't come off anyway if I tried, but you know, I'm going to put a bolt in here. Ah, 
that ain't going anywhere. And also, I put this belt through this keeper that was meant to be there. <laughs> so it's good. Uh, I mean, that it's definitely not going to slip now, for sure. Um, I had to remove this connection, too, because this bar was in the way of me getting it on there. So I'm just going to put this back. I mean, I'll just test it back and forth. responsive now because it's the the um, belt is so tight and also it's on a bigger pulley than the original one so very responsive I feel great wonderful uh, we'll continue with the painting tomorrow So it's the next day, multi-day episode. Uh, I ordered some paint from Amazon. Why? Because it was cheaper than if you went to Home Depot. Home Depot sells these bastards for $7.98. I got it for $5.98 on uh, Amazon with free shipping. So it's easier to just order online and that's why a lot of brick and mortar stores are going out of business because you can't compete with the online big box guys, you know, like Amazon. Uh, anyway, as you can see, over a couple of days after putting Fix-A-Flat in all the tires, sealed all the leaks. Fantastic. Didn't have to pour any ATF in any of it either. Anyway, today we're going to finish up painting the whole thing into the desert sand. cans I was able to get the whole thing pretty much there's some details on the hood that I couldn't get to ran out of paint but I have different color like you can notice that the front part is a little bit darker than the sand color that's okay I like the blend you know what I mean camouflage uh, so I'll fix up the other remaining parts including the bed I can't decide if I want to do the bed black you know inside the bed and it's starting to rain so I got to get this into the garage real quick
So it turned out pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. Still have a little bit more to go, but I'll do that off camera. You guys get the picture. Painting my uh, UTV Desert Sand Color Military 2x6 tractor. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. You gotta go bing! Bing! <laughs> Henry, address the bullet. <laughs> Hello, bullet! <laughs> Hello, bullet! Dead ski. Hey, I'm Andy from Jericho. See, See you guys, guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Blowers.